Hi everyone, it's Michaela. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today we are doing a marine biology q and I haven't done one of these Q&As in a very long time. So I asked you guys on my Instagram to ask me some marine biology related questions. And you guys delivered. You guys had some good questions. So we're just going to sit down and catch up on things all marine biology related. Now, these are in no particular order. I just kind of went through and picked questions. The first one is, what made you decide to major in marine biology? Now, this question I have answered a lot of times on my channel. But, of course, I will answer it again in case people are new here. I grew up in Southern California, so I grew up going to SeaWorld San Diego. And from the age of 10 till about 20, I was obsessed with all things SeaWorld San Diego. I could identify the killer whales, I could tell you their names, I knew pretty much anything there was to know about those killer whales. And up until I was about 19 or 20, I wanted to work there and I wanted to either be a trainer or a rescuer. All I knew was I wanted to work at SeaWorld in some aspect. In summer of 2019, I went to SeaWorld's career camp in SeaWorld San Antonio. And it wasn't until I actually attended a career camp that I realized that I don't want to work here anymore. I still reminisce and look back on those memories very fondly. I actually just watched the little like documentary that I put together when I went to camp just a couple days ago. So if you guys want to check that out, it is either down on my channel. Nala. All right. Nala moved my camera. So I apologize if the framing is not the same as it was before. But as I was saying, I made a documentary of that. If you guys want to check it out, I'll queue it up here or you can scroll down on my channel and watch it there. But that really inspired me to want to do marine biology. And then it wasn't until I went to SeaWorld camp that I figured out that I don't want to work at SeaWorld. And that's when I figured out what avenue of marine biology I actually want to go down. But I guess to answer your question, SeaWorld is what initially inspired me. I think a lot of us marine biologists or fisheries biologists can have the same answer. If you ask anyone, they will more than likely say, I went to SeaWorld as a kid and watched the Shamu show or watched the dolphin show and I wanted to work there. But then I decided I don't like captivity, so here I am now. But basically, I owe it all to SeaWorld. The next question is how do you do research about colleges and look into them other than the college websites? When you look at their websites, they all seem so great. This is a great question that I haven't actually ever answered before. So what I do is I try to find people on social media that go to that school and that have talked about their experiences at that school. And that is my goal with making videos about UAS, going to school in Alaska, studying marine biology here, is so if someone is looking into UAS, they have that extra resource. And I can't tell you how many times I'm walking around campus and someone says, I came to UAS because I saw your videos. And it not only embarrasses me a little bit, but it warms my heart as well. So I'm glad that my videos can be a resource for that. But I recommend finding another person on social media that does the same for a different university. When you read their website, they're all gonna make it seem super glamorous. They're not gonna put the cons or the bad parts of their university on their website. So I would say find someone who already goes there and either stalk their Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or get the nerve to DM them. When I was applying to University of Alaska Southeast, there was nothing on social media about them at all except like their Instagram. But I had a mutual on Twitter who graduated from UAS and so I messaged her and talked to her about the school and that's how I kind of figured out that I wanted to go there. The next question is how do you stay organized with school, work, life, and YouTube? The answer is I really don't. There's a lot going on up here. My ADHD makes me naturally scatterbrained and everything else piling on top does not help in the slightest but 
I have a planner for school and like my everyday life and then I also have a YouTube planner as well where I plan out all my videos and plan out when I'm going to film them, when I'm going to upload them, etc. Canvas and Blackboard also are great tools to help you stay organized. UAS uses Blackboard and UAF uses Canvas. If you guys didn't know, my fisheries program is dual with UAS and UAF, so I'm technically a student at both. But they have Canvas and Blackboard and that really helps because they give you like to-do lists and they put everything in the calendar for you based on your professor's due dates, which is very nice. But I like to keep it real on my channel. My life is a shit show and up here there's always something going on or nothing. There's a lot of times there's just nothing going on up here and I just kind of sit there and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. But that only lasts for a couple of moments and then I'm like, okay, snap out of it. We got all this shit up here to do and to take care of and conquer. But to answer your question, I try to stay as organized as possible using planners, to-do lists. I have to-do lists for to-do lists in my phone. So if you feel like you are overly organized and a little bit like chronic and like whatever, just know that there is always someone that is more extreme than you and that is me. I am the more extreme. Next, do you have any more marine biology tattoo ideas? So. Like I just said, I have lists for everything. I have a list for my tattoo ideas. The first one is a fireweed bouquet with four plants to represent my four family members. Next is a Noah Kahn quote. And the next one is a Juno stamp. You know, those like cute little stamp tattoos. Other than that, I am not fully set on a marine biology version of a tattoo. I know that was your original question and I kind of expanded it. But I think it would be really cool to have a crab above my kneecap. I don't know why I had that idea in my head and I've just like latched onto it and I just really really like it. For those of you who don't know, I have a tattoo right here. So this is off of a photograph that I took last summer on the whale watching boat I worked for. So it's killer whales and a mountainscape. And then I also, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like really show you this one. Oh, so this one is, he's upside down, but this is a sockeye salmon in his spawning phase. But other than that, I don't know. I have those ideas for my tattoos. I'm gonna actually add the crab to my list because I really, really like that idea. Other than that though, not really. I do have a bunch of tattoos planned, the ones that I just listed, to get in April when I'm down in Southern California because that is where my tattoo girl is. Because unfortunately, Juno doesn't have any tattoo artist. I got this one in Palmer and I would go back to him but for the tattoos that I want in the future I want them very fine lined like my salmon and this guy does not do fine line. So but to answer your question yes and no. Do you have any plans for grad school? See this is the question. This is the question every senior in a STEM major gets asked. So I don't at the moment if I were to go to grad school it would be here in Juno at CFOS or it would be at an online program. I have my roots set in Juno at least for the next few years if not very long term and I don't want to uproot and move all over again. I did that almost three years ago and it was hell. I hated making new friends. I hated settling in and I didn't like not knowing anybody and if I were to move for grad school I would essentially be starting all over again and that idea scares the living shit out of me. I also just don't even know if I want to go to grad school. If you are a marine biology major, fisheries major, or anything like that, you do not have to go to grad school to find a job. I know a lot of people will say, you need a master's for everything nowadays, which is true. If you want to be a researcher and you want to be like a big marine biologist or a big fisheries biologist or a professor, you need a master's 
or a PhD. However, I have found plenty of jobs with the state or with the city that you do not need that for. So don't let anyone discourage you because there are jobs out there that are possible with just a bachelor's. But as of right now, I do not have a really big desire to go to grad school. If I did go to grad school, it would be a year or two after I graduated with my bachelor's because I need a break. School has owned me since I was in kindergarten and I'm almost 24 now. So do I have plans? Not at the moment, but that's not to say that it will change in the future. Someone else asked if you were to go to grad school, what would you do? So I, it depends. If I did an online one, it would be something in like marine policy, conservation. But if I did one in person, I have absolutely no clue. I think it would be really cool to do something with salmon, obviously, or something with crabs or something with rockfish. I just don't know. The possibilities are endless. I really like the next question. It says, do you think COVID set you back in school? So for those of you who are not a STEM major, you could probably figure out that doing a STEM degree, marine biology, biology, fisheries, is very hard to do online with all of your labs and such. However, I don't think COVID set me back a lot. I actually did pretty well with online school. What did set me back is I went to the wrong community college off the bat because my high school was not very educated in pointing marine biology majors where to go. And secondly, if you guys don't know me personally, I don't think I've talked about it on my channel much, but I have an autoimmune disease known as Bichette's and I was diagnosed the first semester of my first year of college and that really set me back. I got really far behind and I had to drop a lot of classes. So that set me back a little bit. So I should have graduated in 2022 with the rest of my class. However, I'm graduating in 2024. Now that's not to say that being set back is bad. I know almost nobody that completed a college degree in four years. It is very, very, very hard. I know very few people that have actually done that. It, don't let anyone else make you feel bad for doing it in five years or six years or four years. But COVID didn't necessarily set me back, but there were a lot of things prior to COVID that set me back, making me graduate two years late. Another thing that set me back was changing my major. So I changed my major, my senior year of marine biology. Now that pushed me back to my junior year of fisheries and ocean science. But if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have found that research opportunity that I did last semester. And I wouldn't have done a whole bunch of other research that I got to be a part of. So, if you get set back, it is for the best. Everything happens for a reason. That segues pretty well into my next question, which is what kind of undergrad research have you been a part of? So I worked in the Marine Mammal Lab very briefly, January of, no, November of 21 until April of 22. And I did a lot of editing pictures for photo identification of humpback whales and worked a lot with identifying humpback whales. And then last semester, I got to work with a grad. No, she was a PhD student. She got her PhD. And she was doing PSP on gooey ducks. So I will try to find that paper if I can find it and I will link it down below. That was really awesome research. I got to get experience in the Alaska Department of Fish and Game Mark Tag and Age Lab by aging the gooey ducks, which was freaking awesome. And I got that opportunity by switching my major from marine bio to fisheries and taking ichthyology and making connections through that class because the PhD student was my TA. But can't think of any other research that I have been a part of. It was the marine mammal whale identification and the gooey duck research, but those both were amazing opportunities. What made you switch from marine bio to fisheries and which do you like more? There are two reasons why I switched. Number one is for what I want to do up here, it just made more sense to get a fisheries degree and the classes 
interested me far more than any marine biology elective did. And then it was my second day of OCHEM and my professor looked at the class dead in the eyes and said, if you don't get this now, you might as well drop. And so I did. And OCHEM is not required for a fisheries degree at UAS. So it's a very short answer, but those two things led me to transfer to a fisheries degree. Now, which one do I like more? 100% fisheries and ocean science. I love learning about fish. I know I used to be a really big whale nerd, and I still love whales, don't get me wrong, but salmon are my true calling, and I'm very excited to get a career started in the salmon industry. The last question I will be answering in this Q&A is, do you have any post-grad plans? If so, what are they? For those of you who don't know, I graduate with my bachelor's in fisheries and ocean science in May. That is so soon. I am over the moon excited. I'm so ready to be done with school. But in terms of post-grad plans, I already have a nine to five or like seven to four job at the hatchery, so I plan on doing that. And then I also am going on a really fun road trip with Nick in August. So that'll be about a week and a half. Other than that, I don't really have anything planned. It's just going to be a lot of just daily life, day-to-day -day life. Maybe in a year and a half, two years, I'll start looking into grad school. But who knows what the future will hold. Hopefully I will continue to post on social media and post on YouTube and grow this platform as well. And yeah, we will see what the future holds. Those were all the questions that I will be answering in this Q&A. If you want to be a part of any other future Q&As that I have, make sure to follow my Instagram. It is always down here at the beginning of the video and I will put it right here right now as well. And it is always linked down below as well. And you can always DM me and ask me questions or you can comment questions here and I will can I will include them in my next Q&A as well. But Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, give this video a big thumbs up and while you're down there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so we can grow this happy little corner of the internet we have on my channel. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.